What's up guys, we are back with episode 7 of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, as you can see in the background, what we're doing right now is building a core section of a brand new space station that we're going to build around the MUN. Uh, I accepted a contract to build a orbital station, um, and I thought, you know what, let's go out, let's build something cool uh, with some functionality, that way we can complete other contracts and do some other pretty cool missions. So this is going to be a three-part assembled in orbit around the Mun space station. I could have technically assembled it in orbit around Kerbin. That probably, now that I think about it, would have been a ton easier. But I just didn't know how I was going to... I don't have nuclear engines. I don't have some of the higher tech for that sort of construction. So I just went ahead and built it in orbit around the Mun launched all of the parts there yeah it would have been much easier to do the fuel stage if i had just done it in orbit around carbon but too late now i'm recording voiceover and post-production for for most of this actually for all of this because it was like three hours of uh footage that was recorded and i've been editing it after losing an entire edited the whole thing uh did voiceover and then my editing program crashed oh knocked a drink and I'm having to redo all of it. Oh, it's so much fun. I've stayed up all night doing this. Uh, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So, we uh, we just finished this. Uh, I'm going ahead and fixing some of the curables that I had in there. Making sure I have everybody I need. Um, and then I think I actually... Yep, here we go. We finally launch. So, the first stage wasn't that hard to get up there. Uh, definitely the fuel core stage was the most difficult uh the probe core was wonky it was hard to control uh rcs was a pain it was just a pain getting the fuel stage up there and that's the second part but anyway where were we back to where we were it's a three-part station built in orbit around the mun already said that with a lander uh we've got pretty much everything we need uh, i put a relay dish on there um uh, all kinds of communitrons or just one communitron that way it can act as kind of two different things. Uh, so when we are finally done with the station and bring all the Kerbals back, it'll still have a relay and still have use to it. Uh, being a satellite at that point. Uh, right now we're just getting into orbit. Preparing for a very long transfer burn. These, uh, If you're going to build stations in orbit around another body, it is... You need excess fuel. Uh, these burns are very long. They're very heavy payloads. Um, I underestimated some of these. The second payload when I did the fuel stage, I was not expecting it to be as difficult as it was, and I ended up burning through some of the fuel that was supposed to go on the space station. Luckily, we had a ridiculous excess of I think a thousand. We had a thousand extra units of fuel, and the contract was only requiring two thousand. And we had some left over on the station, so uh, it all worked out. Um, I'm also adding some things that weren't in the contract. I wanted to build uh, kind of my own station that worked for what I was needing. It just so happened that a lot of these contracts worked together. There was a, a few MUN contracts that were going along with this. So it was a great time to build the station. Great launch point for some other expeditions to the MUN. Uh, I think we're going to do a polar mission. Next episode, we're going to launch uh, the lander that we add uh, to the poles of the moon. And then we're going to build a Duna ship. Finally, I think we'll be able to make a mission to Duna. I am so ready. I've been looking forward to get out of the, the Kerbin system and head to Duna. It is uh, very exciting. So, i uh, got to fill up time here. I never usually do post-commentary for the whole video. But this was just way too long and drawn out, and it was just going to be tons of recording and just long, drawn out sections of the video. And I thought, you know what, it might just be better to do all of this in post-commentary. Um, even though I'm not that great at post-commentary, mostly just rambling. But it's better than just watching me click around and boringly explain, you know, we're adding a solar panel multiple times because i had to do some uh, trial and error getting this ship the second stage probably took me seven tries and i could cut all that out it would have just 
been a pain to do commentary for all that. So post commentary for this video. I'll go back to live commentary for the next one. Um, I'll, I'll probably do post commentary for these really long drawn out videos that would suffer from a live commentary. Um, and then I'll add a post commentary if it is uh, just that long and drawn out. So we're finally here in orbit. I'm putting it in a low uh, lunar orbit. That way it's much easier and fuel efficient for our lander to get down and back up. Easier to dock with as well. And then we can uh, move the ship anywhere because I added a um, an engine to the back of this thing. And it's uh, not at, quite at the center of mass, but it's in the center. So it'll be somewhat easy to maneuver the space station around if need be. But yeah, uh, now we're going to head over to build the fuel stage right now. So it's pretty simple. It looks pretty simple. Nothing real complicated about it. I just stuck two fuel tanks on there with a probe core and a docking port. Add some batteries because I like twice forgot batteries and ran out of charge midway and couldn't control the probe. That was a pain. We're also adding some extra solar panels to make it look a little better when it gets there. Pretty simple stuff. But this took so long to figure out how to get this this built. It was much more complicated than it looks. Or maybe I just wasn't understanding it quite yet. I uh, learned some new stuff about fairings, trying some of that out. A lot of trial and error stuff today when I was playing, uh, tweaking everything, and planning the planning this mission. Which, there's plenty of docking ports. We can expand this space station as much as we want. But I think for this functionality, this will be pretty much what we do. It has everything we need, all of the science on there, and the lander fuel, you know, ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll... Uh, fast forward here through the second stage and I will see y'all in just a second. at the mun again uh so we're doing another inclination change at uh which is the maneuver node that i just made this part was the most difficult to get docked and get settled onto the space station i completely forgot to use rcs this whole flight to the mun which made any moving to a maneuver node extremely difficult and took just so long to do which was probably a good thing in the end because I did use a lot of mono propellant trying to dock. It was just so un irritating trying to get this thing to work. I didn't design it very well. I would definitely recommend designing a better... If you're kind of mimicking this, 
are making your own station and you're doing just a, a separate fuel line, either send it up with another part or just design it better than I did. Make it, you know, more maneuverable, a little lighter if you can. Uh, build a better rocket for sure. I just didn't have the rocket to put it up there. The thruster weight wasn't there. So there was no, it was just not, not well engineered. I definitely could have done a better job. I was just super exhausted at this point and was trying to, and I had already, I think seven tries. The first, I, I don't know if I already, oh, my phone. But anyway, I don't know if I already mentioned that I did seven different attempts trying to get this fuel stage right. I had a massive fuel cell that held like, I think 6,000 units of fuel. I couldn't even get that out of orbit. I could get it to orbit, but then moving it was just not happening. So, definitely could have engineered a better rocket. But, here we are. No matter. It worked out in the end. I had to use... I wasn't planning to use the fuel from this tank, but I'm glad I put the engine on there. The engine was just to deorbit it whenever we drained all the fuel, but it ended up saving this entire mission due to the fact that we didn't have enough fuel in the other stage to actually dock with. And docking with another set of weight would have just been painful. So um, I'm definitely glad that we did this. Now what I'm doing here is the easy way of docking, just getting both sides to face, uh, setting the docking port as the target on both craft and then getting them to face each other. This just makes the whole docking process easier, especially considering this was a complete pain to fly. RCS wasn't even a turn. I mean, it was turning, you know, left and right, but moving in any of the X and Y plane directions was kind of difficult or NZ. But here we go. We finally get docked. And I think this whole thing took me about an hour and a half to do. So I was really happy to finally get that thing docked. But anyway, we, uh, we're going to transfer all the fuel here in just a second into that main tank in the center of the, um, in the center of the station. There we go. Missed the word for a second. I've been up all night. So we transfer all the fuel out here and we still have a little extra in that tank, meaning that, uh, we should be able to do plenty of lander missions and extract as much science as we possibly need. So back in the VAB now, we're going to design our lander. It's a pretty simple lander. I didn't go all out here. I just built a, a pretty standard craft. Uh, I made sure that it does have return capabilities to bring our Kerbals back from the MUN. Uh, that was something I really wanted to make sure that I did right. But other than that, the lander is not too complicated. It's just got a Poodle engine, one... Uh, the small saw, I don't remember what the name of the tank is, but the small Rocco Max, and then I put all the rest of our science gear on here, the seismic stuff, or the seismic thing, I don't know what it's called. That way we can do a little bit of extra science, and we'll have to send another mission when we get the Gravioli container. And we'll have a space station already out there, so we won't have to worry about it. So like I said, I, I add some more RCS, pretty simple design. And then I use the same rocket that I used for the first stage or the second stage. They're all pretty much a similar design for insertion into a Mooner Encounter. But considering this was a much, much lighter load, this was so much easier to build. And I really overestimated right here as I can see myself building it. I thought this was gonna be heavy, but then I realized no, this, is, this will be just fine. Add these trusty new boosters with the more boosters update. I love these boosters. They're great. So much better than the uh, the kickbacks. These actually work and are scaled correctly. So I really like them and pretty simple rocket. It's kind of expensive. This whole station, like I said, was pretty, pretty costly. I, I think I estimated 300, 350,000. But after we finish, not just the act for building the station, but the moon or the moon contracts that we accepted along with it, we should end up making good profit from this station. And that doesn't even matter because all the science we're going to get uh, from the lander missions is going to pay off just well. 
And here we are, uh, finally going to do our capture burn here at the mine. And I apologize if this commentary isn't as good as usual. I'm I'm so exhausted. I've stayed up all night having to edit and, and do all this. So I'm really tired. And my ability to commentate post-production after doing all this is not as good. And my eyes are like wanting to close. But we've come this far. And we're going to make it through this. So we do our capture burn and we're preparing to uh, do another inclination change here. Pretty much the same thing. And get a good encounter. And I pretty much mastered the way to get an encounter. Um, if you're wanting to do docking and you're pretty new, I'll explain what I do. I'm not the best. I'm not a pro. Definitely get a tutorial from Scott Manley. He is the man and he will teach you. But if you're... Here for now, the simplest way to get an encounter is if you're above the, the orbit of your target, you want them to be chasing you. If you're below the orbit of your target, you want to be chasing them. Pretty simple concept, and there's a lot more to it, of course. You know, tweaking your inclination and making sure that you're within the correct range and all kinds of stuff to getting an encounter. But... That's the the basics right there, and I accidentally blow up part of the other tank. Luckily, that uh, the docking port saved us from exploding there. That would have been ooh, that would have been bad. I would have been pretty angry, considering we made it all this way. But I didn't. The lander is perfectly safe, and it is so much easier to dock this thing. I was so excited to dock this after having to deal with that pain in the butt fuel tank. And thanks to YouTube's new rules, I can't say the other word. Uh, so we're clean here on this channel. But anyway, the other one was so difficult to dock, and I was happy to finally have a docking session that wasn't horrible. I got a pretty good cinematic shot here coming up soon, too. Luckily, on this mission, I remembered to use RCS the whole time. Measured out all the fuel, so it was much easier. As we come closer and closer, and here's coming up that cinematic shot that I was talking about. I thought this looked pretty cool. Look at that. And there we go. Docked to the space station. Finally. All that work, all that time, and all that trial and error finally paid off. And I think that's really what's fun about Kerbal Space Program. All the trial and error and really figuring things out and building something successful and complete a mi completing a mission. That is... A really cool feeling and one of the big reasons I love this game. So I went ahead and saved here because we wanted to make sure we got that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing some polar missions and we're going to be building a ship to Duna next episode. Finally, we're going to start preparing a mission to Duna as soon as we can to head to the red planet of the Kerbin system. So thank you so much for watching. I was super excited to do this. I was pumped up to build this station and here we go. Even though the commentary was lackluster and could have been better, which I uh, I wish I wasn't so tired right now so I could have done a better job. But I hope you enjoyed anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode.